Here's a somewhat interesting question. Could peptides help restore damaged erectile pili muscles and reverse tough cases of androgenetic alopecia? Well, let's have a look. Treatment with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors are seen as the first line of defense when it comes to combating androgenetic alopecia. We have many studies such as the 10-year Italian study by Rossi et al. and the 10-year Japanese study by Yanagasawa et al. show us that with long-term treatment and early intervention, hair follicles are somewhat recoverable. However, there are cases when the hair follicle may be too far gone or treatment resistant. For this, we turn our attention to the functions and roles of the erector pili muscle. In the study Androgenetic Alopecia, New Insights into the Pathogenesis and Mechanism of Hair Loss by Sinclair et al., the detachment of the erector pili muscle from the hair follicle bulge is a pivotal event in the progression of androgenetic alopecia. The erector pili muscle is a small band of smooth muscle that plays an essential role in maintaining the structural integrity of the hair follicle. It connects to the hair follicle at the bulge, which is a crucial reservoir of epithelial stem cells responsible for hair regeneration and growth. When the erector pili muscle detaches from the hair follicle, it disrupts the connection between the hair follicle and its stem cell niche. This detachment may significantly affect the hair follicle's ability to regenerate and maintain its normal function. The loss of this muscle epithelial attachment leads to a degradation of the supportive environment necessary for the stem cells to function optimally. These stem cells are crucial for initiating the growth of new hair during the antigen phase of the hair cycle. Without the stabilizing influence of the erector pili muscle, the hair follicle's capacity to regenerate diminishes. The stem cells in the bulge area become less effective at proliferating and differentiating into new hair-producing cells. This impairment contributes to the miniaturization of hair follicles, where in the context of androgenetic alopecia, hair follicles produce progressively thinner and shorter hairs. As miniaturization continues, the scalp hair follicles eventually cease to produce terminal hairs altogether, leading to visible baldness. Sinclair's research also provides insights into why male and female forms of androgenetic alopecia exhibit different patterns and responses to treatment. In males, the progressive loss of the erector pili muscle's connection to hair follicles may be more pronounced, leading to the characteristic pattern baldness. In females, although the erector pili muscle also detaches from the follicles, the diffuse thinning pattern suggests a more gradual or less pronounced detachment process, which may partly explain the different clinical presentations and progression rates between the genders. It should be noted that males may experience female pattern types of hair loss and present as diffuse thinners. Likewise, the reverse is true with women. So let's examine the differences between conventional male pattern baldness versus female pattern baldness and relate this to the erector pili muscle. The study divergent progression pathways in male androgenetic alopecia and female pattern hair loss. Trichoscopic Perspectives by Kamishima et al. looks into the nuanced differences between male androgenetic alopecia and female pattern hair loss, which are both forms of androgenetic alopecia. The research aims to explore how these conditions manifest differently at the trichoscopic level and the implications for treatment strategies. Male androgenetic alopecia typically presents with a reduction in hair diameter and density predominantly affecting the vertex and temple regions of the scalp. In contrast, female pattern hair loss is characterized by diffuse thinning, mainly in the central, frontal, and parietal areas. This gender-specific variation in hair loss patterns is significant because it highlights the different pathways and mechanisms underlying these conditions, even though both are fundamentally driven by androgenic factors. A crucial aspect of this study is the analysis of the erector pili muscle's role in androgenetic alopecia. The erector pili muscle, a tiny band of smooth muscle, connects to the hair follicle at the bulge, an area rich in stem cells crucial for hair growth and regeneration. In male androgenetic alopecia, the progressive miniaturization of hair follicles is accompanied by a detachment of the erector pili muscle from these follicles. This detachment is thought to exacerbate hair follicle miniaturization, leading to a reduction in hair diameter and density, and ultimately irreversible hair loss.
The study found that in male androgenetic alopecia, hair diameter decreases early in the disease progression, followed by a reduction in the number of hairs per follicular unit. This sequence suggests that follicle miniaturization initially impacts the size of individual hairs before it reduces the overall number of hairs produced by each follicle. Conversely, in female pattern hair loss, the condition starts with a reduction in the number of hairs per follicular unit, followed by a decrease in hair diameter. This indicates a different mechanism or order of progression where the hair producing capacity of each follicle diminishes first. Now, the implications of this detachment are significant when considering treatments aimed at androgenetic alopecia. Right now, the standard treatments such as 5-alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride or dutasteride work by reducing the levels of DHT in the scalp and follicular tissues. But if what Sinclair et al. highlights is true, then we may have a bottlenecking in some patients when it comes to treating the androgram genetic alopecia, such that for those that start to treat their baldness late, the number of hair follicles that could possibly be saved and have their miniaturization partially or wholly reverse would be greatly reduced. So, like Sinclair and colleagues suggest, developing treatments that may potentially target the erector pili muscle and reattach it to the hair follicle would probably help reverse hair loss. And there is no restorative surgery we could do to reattach this muscle to the hair follicle. Now, I would speculate that peptides and the promise of their restorative properties may be an avenue to explore. When taking a look at the erector pili muscles, we can note that they are connected to the hair follicles and are controlled by the sympathetic pilomotor nerves. So this means that the erector pili muscles, which cause hair to stand up, are regulated and activated by specific nerves that respond to certain stimuli. This would be either states of coldness or emotional responses like fear. So, this may be me joking here, but there might be an ever so slight chance that watching a scary movie or going on a roller coaster ride, or hell, maybe even having your crush say they love you, is beneficial to scalp hair growth. But somebody might want to see the science on that, so maybe we should uh, get a study on that. Anyway, going back to the video. This is due to how the nerves release a neurotransmitter called norepinephrine, which causes the erector pili muscles to contract resulting in the erection of hairs, commonly known as goosebumps. One potential strategy to enhance hair growth involves using pharmacological agents that mimic the action of norepinephrine. These drugs, known as adrenergic agonists, could be applied topically to stimulate the sympathetic nerves directly. By promoting the contraction of the erector pili muscles, these agents could help maintain their attachment to the hair follicles, potentially preserving the follicles' structural integrity and supporting hair growth. Peptide-based treatments also offer promising avenues for targeting the erector pili muscles. So some peptides could be designed to enhance the release of norepinephrine from the sympathetic nerves or to mimic its effects. So such a peptide would be a short chain of amino acids engineered to interact with the receptors or the release mechanisms associated with norepinephrine, and it should have regions that resemble the structure of norepinephrine. That can also ensure effective binding to the adrenergic receptors or to stimulate norepinephrine release from the sympathetic nerves. We can take a look at the literature review article titled, quote, Recent Progress in the Understanding of the Effect of Sympathetic Nerves on Hair Follicle Growth, unquote, by Jarui Zhang et al explores the significant role of sympathetic nerves and their neuropeptides, especially norepinephrine, in promoting hair follicle growth. The authors detail how norepinephrine, released from sympathetic nerve fibers, interacts directly with hair follicle stem cells through specialized synapse-like connections, effectively triggering and maintaining hair growth. A critical aspect discussed in the review is the short half-life of these neuropeptides, which presents a challenge for their sustained therapeutic use. To overcome this, the authors suggest the potential of local application techniques and advanced drug delivery systems, such as liposomes and extracellular vesicles. These methods could protect the neuropeptides from rapid degradation and ensure a more prolonged and targeted stimulation of hair follicle stem cells. These peptides would help maintain the tone and function of the erector pili muscles, ensuring their attachment to the hair follicles and thereby supporting hair growth. Additionally, potentially regenerative peptides such as thymosin, beta-4, or KPV could be investigated for their ability to promote tissue repair 
and regeneration. By repairing and strengthening the connections between the muscles and hair follicles, regenerative peptides could play a significant role in maintaining the health of the follicles and encouraging hair growth. Furthermore, if vertiporfin is proven to be an effective means of scarless tissue regeneration in humans, I could envision a protocol designed to restore large areas of a bald scalp back to a state where erector pili muscle is restored. This implies a trauma, then injection, then healing response. It is within that healing period where I could see peptides, whether known now or in the future, being used to heal and generate new skin structures, including erector pili muscles, sebaceous glands, and hair follicles.